we are pleased to introduce a new electrophysiology-based audiometric test using electroencephalography or EEG. This innovative EEG test stands out from other electrophysiological audiometry methods like ASSR or ABR due to its quickness and strong robustness to noise. Along with its objective measurement capabilities, this new EEG method is a great alternative for diagnosing hard-to-test populations, such as young children and individuals with disabilities. To evaluate this new EEG test, we conducted a study in oldenburg Ozentrum on 15 participants to compare its performance with the conventional behavioral test Pewton or Geometry. The fundamentals of this EEG test lies on the extraction of the brain response elicited by auditory stimulation. Auditory stimulation evokes a cascade of cortical potentials called auditory evoked potentials or AEPs at different latencies. The amplitude of these AAPs varies with the intensity of the stimulation, or in other words, with the strength of the perception to this stimulation. By this means, we can estimate the audiometric thresholds at the volume intensity where the brain starts to perceive the stimulus. Common EEG-based methods to extract cortical AAP amplitude usually suffer from the noise sensitivity of the measurement. As a consequence, to maximize good quality of the EEG data, the interval between each stimuli must be long enough, typically over a second, to reliably measure the evoked brain response. In this new EEG test, participants are presented with a stimulus of a given modality, meaning a pseudo-random combination of frequency, volume intensity, and lateralization at a fast rate of 5 Hz. This pseudo-random sequence with minimized auto and cross-correlation properties ensure that the stimuli and the associated brain responses are decorrelated from each other. This allows the decoding algorithm to extract the amplitude of the evoked potential for each modality, even if those evoked potentials are overlapping. This fast presentation rate makes this EEG test capable of recording a high volume of EEG data in a short time. With this data, we can now decompose the brain response. For that, let's jump into the decoder's model. The EEG data is expressed as the sum of the brain's responses to the stimulus modalities, weighted by a factor theta for each modality, and associated to a neural source A, plus some noise. Our methods aim to extract the auditory evoked potential R, its special pattern A, and the weighting factor theta for each modality of the auditory stimulus. This can be achieved in a two steps process. First, we extract the spatial pattern A and the auditory evolved potential R using canonical correlation analysis, or CCA. Then, given a fixed spatial pattern A and an evoked response R, we can solve for the weighting factor theta. From the spatial pattern, we can derive a strong filtering mechanism that optimizes the estimation of the brain response amplitude, making our method very robust against noise and artifacts such as eye blinks or movements. Finally, we can estimate audiometric thresholds where the amplitude of the brain response starts to increase. To validate our methods, we measured audiometric threshold in 10 hearing impaired participants and 5 healthy hearing participants using both the EEG test and the gold standard behavioral audiometry PTA. We also included a control condition using behavioral audiometry with the same materials as the EEG method. We recorded 15 minutes of EEG data, but we want to reduce this time to the minimum required time for this EEG test. For that, we iteratively estimated thresholds with adding 30 seconds of EEG data at each step and compared the estimated threshold with PTA threshold. Then we can identify at which time point the performance of the model no longer increases. By comparing the sum of the square error between PTA threshold and EEG threshold, we identify this duration to be 5 minutes and 30 seconds of data. Therefore, in the next analysis, we use only the first 5 minutes and 30 seconds of recording to estimate thresholds and compare them with the behavioral methods. To compare two methods, we perform a linear regression analysis reporting the Pearson correlation coefficient, the slope and intercept of the regression, and the p-value. By comparing the PTA threshold and the EEG threshold using only 5.5 minutes of data, 
we found significant correlation at p below 0.001 and a Pearson correlation close or above 0.8, indicating a strong linear relationship between PTA and EEG thresholds. However, the 8000 Hz regression was biased by two clusters, the control group and the hearing impaired group. By focusing only on the hearing impaired group, we observed that the correlation at 8000 Hz was weaker but still significant. The quality of the decoding is highly relying on the signal-to-noise ratio. The impairment being very high at this frequency and the volume range being fixed, we might have failed to optimally stimulate heavily hearing impaired participants with enough perceptible stimuli to extract a satisfying brain response. Added to the fact that this potential evoked by higher frequency are inherently weaker than for low frequencies, the extraction of the AAP at 8000 Hz is more difficult than for other frequencies. Nonetheless, all other frequencies are strongly correlated with the PTA threshold for this group. We also noted a systematic offset between the EG and PTA thresholds, characterized by a high intercept. To evaluate if this phenomenon could stem from the duration of the stimulus, which is 30 milliseconds for the EEG test and 1 to 3 seconds for PTA, we compared EEG and PTA with the third condition, a behavioral audiometry using also 30 milliseconds pure tones. By then extracting the root mean square deviation to zero of the two linear regressions, we found that this offset only appears when comparing PTA. This indicates that this offset is likely due to the differential perception of a 30 millisecond stimulus versus a stimulus with a duration over one second. In summary, our results show that EG thresholds and PTA thresholds are strongly correlated. However, the correlation at 8000 Hz for the hearing impaired group was weaker. To improve that, we can optimize the stimulation to present more loud tones that can be perceived and generate a satisfying AAP. We also identified a systematic offset between EEG and PTA threshold caused by the shorter stimulus duration in this EEG test. In the future research, we need to better characterize this perceptual difference in order to identify a correction factor to translate short stimulus EEG thresholds to conventional behavioral thresholds. To conclude, our study demonstrates the feasibility of a quick and robust EEG audiometric test capable of generating a full audiogram in just 5 minutes and 30 seconds for 250, 500, 1000, 2000, 4000 and 8000 Hz at both ears. Thank you very much for your attention and if you have any questions I'd be very happy to answer them.